Welcome back to Cloak & Dagger. I'm your host, Lenny Bloom, along with my co-host, Eric Phelps, from VaticanAssassins.org. Once again, Eric and I are here to scrape the bullshit off the truth and to expose the state secrets that the ruling elite hope you don't learn. Eric, it's great having you back here at Cloak & Dagger. Pleasure to be with you, Lenny, and your listeners. Well, as everybody knows, because they've clicked on the link, we're going to be exposing Alex Jones as a Jesuit coadjutor. Uh, which he is, and um, it's funny, Eric, before you go into your uh, uh, information and your facts on it and your smoking gun, uh, let me just explain something about my um, experience with Alex Jones uh, many years ago, which you're familiar with, I told you about it at the time. Uh, you'll recall that um, Sherman Skolnick, uh, our wonderful, uh, wonderful, great American judge buster, my former co-host, he and I were asked on to Alex Jones's show, and um, what happened was we were asked by Alex Jones after he had been given complete, free, unfettered, uncensored reign on our show, Sherman's and my show, on Cloak and Dagger, uh, Cloak and Dagger on Mojo Radio, 640 AM Talk Radio for Spies. Now, on that show, we didn't censor anything. And he invited us back a week later onto his show. The day before, the night before we went on, he called us and asked us what it was we wanted to talk about. We told him that what we wanted to talk about. And, of course, Sherman, through his uh, discoveries over his 40, 50 years of, of uh, investigations, recognized that all roads led to Rome. Mm -hmm. And so that was one of the things he wanted to finally point out on Jones' show. And he told Jones that. Mm -hmm. So the call ended, and the next day we called into the show. Actually, they called us. The studio called us. And we weren't able to talk at all about the Jesuits or the Jesuit order or Vatican or Rome or anything to do with that. He censored us from talking about it and used the callers as a way of censoring us. Mm -hmm. It got to the point where during an ad, during one of the ads, Sherman and he had it out. And he, Sherman said, look, you're preventing us from explaining and talking about what we want to talk about, which is getting down to bedrock. And we didn't do that to you, Alex, on our show. And he said he made excuses as to how we have to can't go into that because the callers don't want to hear about it. We've got to get a call about that. And, of course, all the calls, many of the calls, we realized were all dummy calls. There were Alex Jones's guys in the, in the studio calling in because they wanted to move the topic away from the Jesuits. So right there and then, we, Sherman, after we hung up, we talked about and realized that this whole Bohemian Grove video was they got it out because he was given it by the Jesuits. He's part of them. He, of the whole thing was a big fake that he moved in there. Right. And Jones, you're a fraud, and we've nailed you today. Go ahead. Uh, exactly right. Yeah. That's right. And I saw that clip with him and um, David Durgan, and, and you knew they were working together in that supposed little confrontation. I mean, it's really quite telling. And then the confrontation between him and George Bush when Bush was governor of Texas, when Alex Jones says, uh, you know, what about the CFR? What about the Federal Reserve? He's Tim Smith's leading you people astray. And then they, orchestra, they uh, escorted him out of the building. Well, yeah. If it would have been anybody else, we would have arrested him. They would have been Durkin if it would have been anybody else. Right. So it, it was obvious from those two clips that he was a coadjutor, just like uh, just like that other coadjutor that made, uh, oh, what was it, uh, Fahrenheit 9-11, Michael Moore, when he pretends to be an enemy of Bush when he's in yeah. Bush's ranch. And, <laughs> and Bush says, hey, just want you to get a job there, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> So the Jesuits are, are operating on both sides of the dialectic, on the, on the alternative media, on the supposed opposition, as well as the conservative right wing. So in further exposing Alex Jones, I want to say one positive thing about him, and that is that on all the low-level stuff, he's right. That the fascists and the communists are financed by the same people. Uh, that the CFR is for one world government. Um, that uh, the Illuminati is involved, and that the globalists are all behind us. He, he is very much right in all the details that he sets forth, the concentration camps, et cetera, et cetera. But never, never does he cross that line and step over into the area of the Jesuit order and its power over the Vatican, and thus the Vatican's relationship to the New World Order and its control of high-level Freemasons. Oh, he's scared to death to do that. He will never talk about it. Now, uh, here, there's a few things. I received an email from a gentleman, and I'd like to read it if I may. Uh, this is a guy from the name of Mr. Taylor. And he says to me, since Alex Jones is against the Patriot Act, it seems as if he would actually speak about who authored it. But he won't. Michael Chertoff is credited as the architect of the USA Patriot Act. Well, of course he's going to be credited because, you see, he's a racial Jew. So we have to blame the Patriot Act on the Jews. Mm -hmm. But what's the real catch here? Uh, but he, in fact, co-authored it with Viet 
E. Din, D-I-N-H. Now, Viet Din is a Roman Catholic Vietnamese attorney. And uh, this Mr. Taylor goes on to say, Viet Din, and by the way, I have his picture in VA3, of Jesuit Georgetown Law, Jesuit College. That's right. Viet Din is a professor at Georgetown Law School, actually a law center. And Viet Din uh, also served two years as a U.S. Assistant Attorney General. And during that time was instrumental in drafting the USA Patriot Act. So while he's working at the Department of Justice as an Assistant Attorney General, mm -hmm. he is also involved working with the Jesuits at Georgetown University in writing the, what, 200-page Patriot Act? Yeah. Ready to foist upon the American people after 9-11 that the Jesuits paused uh, by Edward Cardinal Egan, the Knight of Malta, head of the American branch of the Knights of Malta, using his most faithful Knight of Malta and head of the CIA, George J. Tennant, also a Jesuit trained at Georgetown. So the Jesuits caused 911, and they bring forth their Patriot Act as a war on the liberties of the American people, because we must remember the Jesuits are the greatest absolutists in the world. They hate limited government. They hate constitutional government that would be a specific grant of power, and the rest of the powers be reserved to the people pursuant to the Ninth and Tenth Amendment. So we have here that this Viet E. Din was a Jesuit, a Jesuit coadjutor, a Roman Catholic from Vietnam, and, uh, of course, the uh, um, DM of, of Vietnam was a fascist Roman Catholic. His brother was the Archbishop of Hue, so we have some very noble-blooded uh, Vietnamese that were part of the Vietnam War, and then also uh, descendants have come over here, been trained by Jesuits, and now we had one as an assistant uh, attorney general. It goes on and says, Din is also a member of the CFR. So Alex Jones will not touch Viet E. Din, this Roman Catholic Vietnamese man, Jesuit trained at Georgetown, an assistant attorney general, as one of the co-authors of the Patriot Act. Right. Why will he not go there? Okay, and another thing Alex Jones will not touch is he will not touch the leader, the real founder of the Department of Homeland Security. Mr. Ryder goes on to say not only that, but John C. Gannon, who's an Irish Roman Catholic and a member of the Jesuit Volunteer Corps, um, he's also not a Malta CFR member, affiliated with Jesuits at Georgetown, he says, John C. Gannon, founder of the Department of Homeland Security, is a member of the Jesuit Volunteer Corps. Other Roland or Homeland Security conspirators are Emilio T. Gonzalez. Emilio T. Gonzalez, intimately involved with the Department of Homeland Security, is a Knight of Malta. A Knight of Malta who answers to Edward Cardinal Egan, that Knight of Malta, the Archbishop of the Capital of the World in New York City, and Michael P. Jackson, Georgetown grad, another Knight. So the Department of Homeland Security is run by the Knights of Malta. It was created by a Knight of Malta, John C. Gannon, who was given the highest award by President George Bush for civil service uh -huh. because this guy was in the CIA for some 23, 24 years. Uh -huh. And now he is intimately associated from Georgetown University, the real capital of America, dictating policy to whoever resides in the White House. So it's these kinds of people that Alex Jones will not interview. Yeah, and, and he will and he will never attack them, and he will never expose them. Yeah, and it's a smoking gun. It's 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 a, it's a stink, the whole thing sticks out like a sore thumb because they always they always ignore the obvious. They always Correct. ignore the obvious. The the, <laughs> the the Jesuits and these guys from the from the Jesuit colleges they always ignore them, and yet they're all there in the background. And by ignoring them, what Jones and all these other Jesuit coadjutors do is they make them stick out like a sore thumb and a mushroom cloud. That's exactly right. Another thing, this uh, exposure at Bohemia Grove, quote-unquote, why did not Alex Jones uh, show the connection of a statue there of a Roman Catholic priest, John Napoleon, I believe that's how you pronounce his last name, who was put to death by, I believe it was the king of Czechoslovakia in the 13th century, it's Bohemia, something like that back then, for refusing to divulge what was confessed to him in the confessional. And he has his finger over his mouth there at Bohemian Grove in a sh kind of fashion. Well, this is typical Jesuit. And the Jesuits, if you even go to Wikipedia and you read about this man, you see that they love him. They have greatly exonerated him because, you see, he was a great perfector, pr protector of the confessional of which the Jesuits are. That's why the Jesuits moved American common law to Roman civil law. Under Roman civil law, whatsoever is confessed to a priest in a confessional cannot be forced to be divulged in court. But at the canon of the common law, it can be forced can be held in contempt if you don't tell what was confessed to the confessional. That international system of espionage and intrigue. 
Okay, those are a couple things. I'll, I'll go a little bit uh, farther here. Yeah. Um, Alex Jones um, is he? Um, he publicly lauded Martin Sheen's work. Right. Martin Sheen is a Jesuit temple coadjutor par excellence. <laughs> I have him in a picture in my book at the Novitiate here nearby in Warnersville, Pennsylvania, and he's with.